Jerry Baker says, will this year's defense look like 2019 or better? That's our next topic. Is this the best defense the Niners have had under Kyle Shanahan? Clearly 2019 uh, holds the crown. It definitely does have a chance to. And if you want to overreact after three practices, you can just straight up say yes. Like, you can't. But the reason that the, it, it has a possibility is because the pass rush is going to be that, and they've been dominant, that down and, you know, compared to these last two days, right? Like, I wasn't here for, for yesterday, today's practice, but yesterday was downright dominant. Now you have the secondary that Traverse Ward is is clamping down on everybody. Emmanuel Mosley is the number two. I mean, he had a fantastic uh, PBU on on a tough catch that Brandon Ayuk almost made. He played through the play, knocked it out. Uh, Jimmy Ward is who he is, and they were using Talano Hufanga closer to the line. Maybe a little bit of single high, not asking him to do too much in terms of, of coverage. But, yeah, if they play solid football and they stay healthy, man, this this is the best secondary that the Kyle Shanahan and Lynch have had, no hands down. And when you think about 2019, you think about how much they ran cover three, and that, you know, has a little bit to do with the fact that Richard Sherman, you know, was a little bit older. You don't want to leave him on an island. Those other guys you didn't really want to leave on an island. But even when Sh Sh Sherman was peak Sherm, he was running cover three. He was just he was just smart, instinctual. So, yeah, there's more flexibility that they can have with this man's covers and, and all these things that they can throw out there. Traveris Ward and Emmanuel Mosley are upright all year. And then Jason Verrett comes in there. Now you're really, really talking about, like, the three, the, the, the best three right there, like, up there in the league. Like, it, it's got to be up there at the top of the league. Yeah, I mean, I feel like Mosley, maybe it's not proven yet. I feel like he's a lot better than he was two years ago. You saw him the other day. He looks better. He looks like he's in his prime, stronger. Um, Traverius Ward is better than I think old Richard Sherman was. I think uh, Jason Verrett didn't contribute that year. Yeah, I mean, they don't have Buckner. Mm -hmm. And we don't know what they got in Kinlaw. And Armstead's hurt. But I honestly feel like they're so deep on their D-line. Here's the big difference. They're done with D Ford. That's a big one. I've always kind of, even though his best year was 2019, he never really had the impact they thought he would have. He, To me, now they have three guys who can do what he was supposed to do. They have Drake Jackson, Kamoko Ture. They have so much depth on the edge. Ebukam is, is the guy that you're probably going to say. Ebukam, yes. They like three guys, and that's not even counting Jordan Willis, who's good. And oh, many I don't know. Them. Yeah, I mean, they, they're not as gifted. They don't have Buckner, but I think they might have – they're way deeper on the edges. Oh, yeah. And that's, that's the thing. That's the thing. It's like top-end talent. You're not going to be able to beat that that front four yeah. of Armstead, Buckner, Bosa, and D-Ford. You're not going to be able to beat that top end. But depth-wise – and that's where the, the pass rush came alive at the end of the year was more yeah. because they had fresh legs over and over, and they had guys that were putting it together. It took Ebicom a little while. Arden Key became a com contributor. You know, Amenahue finally was putting it together. He was talking about how much the scheme change was a little bit different for him, and I think that's kind of what happened to Ebicom as well too. So, yeah, top end defensive line in 2019, you're not going to be able to touch that. But depth wise, I think you have a stronger rotation, and you have more. Uh, you have a more defined, you know, Nick Bosa in, in this year and everything as well too. Eric Armstead was actual absolute like menace like last year down the stretch. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's very fair to say that. You could argue that the depth is more important. I mean, you want Nick Bosa, but after that. Like that D line in 2019 ran out of gas. It got hurt. It ran out of gas. Uh, this one, it's deeper than last year. Mm -hmm. And what was interesting about last year, like they faced Dallas in the first round. Dallas had the number one offense, no? Mm -hmm. Number okay. one scoring offense. Number one scoring offense in the league. Bosa gets hurt first first half. Mm -hmm. They shut down the number one offense without Bosa for a half in the playoffs. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you why this defense has the real chance to be the best defense. D'Amico Ryans, because he was so good playing like to the personnel strength or, or personnel weaknesses across the board. Like it wasn't just like this vanilla, like, okay, this is just what we're going to run. No, no. Right. Okay. Every time it starts against Cincinnati, then we've got to shade guys over to his side and keep him, keep him protected. And, and certain games, like, you know, the Packers games, the same thing, shading somebody over to Devontae Adams, confusing Aaron Rodgers. He was so good all the way down the stretch of just changing up his, his, uh, his play calls. It wasn't just, you know, and no disrespect to Robert Solid. No disrespect to him. It's just everything no, was yeah. just cover three, cover three, cover three, cover three, and let the let the four guys go get him. It's amazing what D'Amico has been able to do or was able to do last year with Amory on the field and Josh Norman. I mean, whoa. Because those guys, if you don't help them, will get burned. I'm seeing it every day with Amory Thomas. Josh Norman was worse. So, wow. Now that he has Mosley and Ward, defense, he's going to be so much more aggressive. He was good last year but he was like conservative and that was the right adjustment to make because you saw what happened early in the season all those big yeah. plays penalties because he didn't have the now he has the talent yeah 
And some and some of those plays too, like in, in week three, it's like just a guy's like a slightly out of position. He doesn't get enough depth. Then and Aaron Rodgers makes you pay because he has a, an amazing yeah. arm. So yeah, so that that's the other thing is while his while he grew, like he started games with like every time it's Josh Norman, and they still were a top three pass defense. Like and a lot of that has to do with Miko Ryan's. Yeah, a top three pass defense with Bree Thomas and Josh Norman. This defense really could it it might be the best defense they've had again. They lost Eric. They lost. They uh, they lost Armstead for a month. Kinlaw is on the way back. You still don't know what you're ever going to have from him. They could. They could be elite without those two. They could. They're I think Armstead's going to be fine yeah. though. I think he'll play. Yeah, okay. I think he'll be good for week one. Like he he's actually the one guy that I wouldn't worry about. Like oh, he needs reps or anything like that. As long as he stays in shape, I think he should be good to go for week one. Yeah, and as long as he stays a defensive tackle, he's an impact player, a good player. But um, <laughs> even if they missed him for a game, he'd be like, I'll be all right. They're still yeah. still a great D line. Yeah. Uh, one more. Hold on. That Niner guy says this is the last couple. This is a last couple. Is this lap? I don't even know what that says. Football is hard. Being a good quarterback takes time. Okay, that makes sense. It's day three of camp. Long process ahead for Trey. Take it one day at a time. Let the kid figure it out. Yeah, they'll figure it out. And and I think uh, when you think about last year too, is like Kyle Shanahan didn't really know what to do with Trey during certain games and how to and how to game plan. Right. Like it almost took like it almost felt like Kyle had to get into a rhythm himself. So yeah. how much of that is like what's going on now? But I mean, you would think that with the entire offseason, like, hey, you know, this is but how much of that has to do with Trey not, you know, progressing right away or just having rough days. So, like, it's not anything to be super uh, worried about at this point. No. Patek says, has Tavarius Moore been playing good? I yeah, haven't noticed. He hasn't, he hasn't really been getting too much. Of, you know, I mean, he looks uh, he looks fast, but uh, he hasn't really been getting too many reps. Matthew Sanders says, um, this schedule is a murderer's row. Lots of opposing offenses are going to keep things interesting late. We're paper tiger until further notice. Damn, Matthew. Talk to him, man. Damn, Matthew. I mean, I, yeah, I, damn. I, she should... Got a lot to prove this year. Whole new team. Bryant says not confident, and uh, Jimmy G is still here for what? Oh, but Nanahan is not confident. Oh, my God. Thank you for I don't know if he's not. Con- I don't know if he's not confident, man. I'm not going to I'm not going to speculate on that. Again, I wasn't dead today or anything like that, so. What was funny was uh, so Trey Lance had the bad day on yesterday. He mm-hmm. comes out afterwards and and talks and we're like, "So, not your best day, huh?" And he's like, "No, it was a good day. Good day for the offense." And we're all like, "Okay, I see what you're doing, but what do you mean?" And so then Kyle today this morning was like, "Oh yeah, it was a great day. It was a phenomenal day." It was like and then, then there's today. So we, I really would have been, hey, Kyle, was today good? Hey, Kyle. Hey, Trey. I'd like to know. Did you still think today was maybe the day of the day? But I'm a jerk like that. Cisco Kid says, Trey might struggle early with the simple throws, moving the chains, and keeping drives alive. Jimmy kept the offense on the field. Trey just needs reps to get comfortable and have that offense in rhythm. That's a fair comment. Yeah. Because he's got the big play. That, that, again, when everybody was excited about Trey Lance, and they still should be, and they still, like like this, yeah. like I don't understand why this has the feel of like all of a sudden, like oh my god, it's it's cooked, it's done, like you know, like. But everybody knows the bumps were gonna happen. Well, now the bumps are happening, and everybody's just like burn it all down, like oh my god, freak out. It's like guys, if we I'm not prepared this, for this, right? Like if we knew the bumps were gonna happen, like it's just you didn't want to hear about this this early. But pads aren't on, things like that. You can't like you can't objectively say that one thing is the other at this point like it's there's a lot of time guys there's a lot of time and a lot of other organizations offenses are struggling right now at this point especially ones that have new quarterbacks and just remember last year Debo was here the entire time so it was Kittle mm-hmm. and Ayuk Jimmy Garoppolo threw 11 picks in camp and Bosa never played mm-hmm. so it's not like just it's Trey's fault mm-hmm. it's partially his fault but swapping out quarterbacks is not going to fix this mm-hmm. this is an offensive problem and Wait, so you're saying Sudfeld's not the move? Because it's funny. It's like, okay, well, you could do it and say, all right, Trey, just check down a bunch and get through the day and say you have a good completion percentage and no one will get on your back. That's what Sudfeld's doing, but even he's throwing picks. I mean, it's just getting – it's just utter domination right now. Right now. Defense is balling out, man. It's been, it's been super fun to watch. 